So, you've been trying to learn how to make games, but you always seem to hit a brick wall whenever you get started. You lose motivation, do something else for a few months, and then you come back all motivated just to meet that same old brick wall again. Does that sound familiar? Well, here's how you smash that wall. These are five mistakes that almost every new developer makes when learning, and how you should approach those problems correctly. These are all going to be engine agnostic, so it doesn't really matter what game engine you're trying to learn, it all still applies. Tutorials Following tutorials is great, but here's where that can go wrong. You pick up a tutorial and you follow it line by line. At the end of it, you see results. Great, you've made something. No, no you didn't. You just sat on a chair someone else made. Now the next time you want to code something else, you tend to get into the habit of looking for another chair to sit on. Sometimes you'll find one, and that'll keep your legs from hurting a little bit longer. And sometimes you won't, and you immediately feel like quitting because you feel really lost and don't know where to sit. So many people get into a habit of constantly doing tutorials one after the other, without really understanding any of them. And then they get demotivated, because they can't seem to make anything on their own, no matter how many tutorials they're doing. Now instead, if you took the time to examine the chair, you'll start to understand how it's assembled. This won't be easy, you'll find it really confusing. But the important thing is that you really attempt to understand it in the first place. Truly understanding something, even if it's just a little bit, will now allow you to use that knowledge elsewhere. Don't try to learn the tutorial, try to learn the concept it's trying to showcase. All you need is this mindset change, because you no longer need to look for a specific chair, or a chair at all, because you can bring in knowledge from other seemingly unrelated tutorials and apply bits and pieces to the problem you're currently facing. And now, you can reliably figure out how to sit anywhere you go. The issue is that most beginners don't realize this until much later, or often at all, and just end up quitting because making games is so difficult. But that's not the real reason here. I'm not saying it's easy, but most people quit before even getting to the hard part. And that's only because they're not approaching learning correctly. You'll never get anywhere if all you've ever made is copied from a tutorial. Let's take a basic example. Player movement. You'll find this exact code snippet on every single beginner tutorial. Nice, you've done it. And now you know how to do movement. Well, do you? Only when you question every single thing here, will you really understand that get access is a static method in the input class that returns a normalized float based on the input actions we pass in and what buttons we press. We get the input vector for both the horizontal and vertical components separately and store it as a new vector called input vector. We then scale that normalized vector with speed so that we have control over how quick the movement should be and we multiply delta to make this frame rate independent. We then add this to our current position and we do all of this every single frame. All of this might sound confusing if you're just starting out, but know that this is very basic fundamental knowledge that you can understand quite easily, provided that you take the time to question it and examine it closely. Try to analyze the tutorial and understand why they're doing what they're doing. If a 10 minute tutorial took you 10 minutes to follow, you're doing something wrong. Don't just copy it, pick it apart and make sure you understand exactly what's going on in every single line. Only then will you be able to write code on your own. I understand the urge to immediately get on Discord and ask a question the second you get stuck. But in a lot of cases, it's just much quicker for you to google your question before asking about it. If your question is a single line, more often than not, you can probably google it to get a quick answer. I know this seems obvious and dumb to even list as a point, but you'd be surprised at how much quicker you can learn if you learn to google the right way. A lot of times you can break your question down into smaller chunks and find answers to those quickly. Being very specific with your search queries and learning to use the right keywords and technical terms is really important. This will also develop your problem solving skills and you can spend less time waiting for a response to basic questions. Also learn to read the docs. A lot of information is already laid out neatly, you just need to know where to look for it. Whenever you have a problem, break it down and approach it piece by piece. Googling these pieces often leads you to the docs or forums where others have already asked a similar question before. It's great that you can ask questions on Discord and get someone to respond immediately, but so many people just fall into this habit of mindlessly asking questions without even thinking, just like the endless tutorial loop we talked about earlier. I'm trying to do this but it doesn't work. Doesn't show code. Show us what you're doing then. Show the code. You cannot expect to get help on code without showing the code. This doesn't work. Paste code block. Information shouldn't have to be interrogated out of you. 
If you take the time to formulate a real question, you're going to be saving everyone a lot of time, including yourself. What doesn't work? Give us more context. What do you want it to do? What is it doing? Are there any errors? What have you already tried? I tried this, but I get an error. Doesn't show the error? What is the error? Do you just want me to guess? You need to understand that it's next to impossible to help you if you give no information. Digging information out of you is the biggest waste of everyone's time. What is wrong with my code? This is not a real question. You clearly have an error there. Start with that. This is an oversimplified example. The issue is clear here. But very often, not stating the error, no matter how simple the issue is, just wastes time. Very often, you see really basic errors taking a long time to get solved just because the person helping needs to go back and forth asking 17 different basic questions just to figure out what the problem is. Try to think of what information might be relevant before you ask and formulate a concise query with as much information as you can give right from the start. If you can't put minimal effort into solving your own problem, why should anyone else? Here's how you construct a good question. This is a lot easier to debug and you're more likely to get a response this way. And please stop cropping your screenshots. Something obvious is always hidden with a cropped screenshot and it takes up so much time just to figure out the missing information which could have been avoided with a full screenshot right from the start. Even if it seems completely irrelevant, always send full screenshots. My code does not work. Solution. Try solution. Wow, thanks you so much, it works perfectly. The end. This is how 90% of beginner interactions go in any game dev discord. But pause. You had a bug. Someone showed you the correct code. Bugs fixed. What did you gain from this interaction? Nothing. You just pasted someone else's code and moved on. Sure, your bug's fixed, but you didn't learn anything from this. And the next time you come across the exact same problem again, you'll be just as lost. If the fundamental reason you ask questions is just to fix your bugs, you are wasting time. Your primary aim should be to understand the bug, not fix it. That's secondary. Ask more questions. Make sure you understand exactly why your code was wrong and why their code works. Never be satisfied with an answer to your question until you completely understand it. Keep asking as many questions as you need until you get to the bottom of it. Another big mistake so many people make is just to not read the error before asking a question. A lot of times, especially in beginner bugs, there's an error stating exactly what's wrong. Read it. Google your error first before asking about it. Chances are that someone has already come across the error before and discussed it online. And if you still don't understand it, that's okay. State what you've looked up and ask what the error means, not this code does not work. The important bit is that you attempt to understand what the error is saying and what the root cause of the error is. Understanding the error will ensure that you know what's wrong the next time you encounter it. There are so many common errors that you constantly encounter when starting out, like a null reference exception, for example. Simply saying this code doesn't work might get someone to give you the solution but you aren't learning anything if you're just satisfied with that answer. Once you're able to recognize the basic errors and know what factors cause those errors, you can focus on tackling the actual hard parts of game development. Now, by no means am I claiming to be an expert developer. I've never even finished a full game project. Why should you listen to me then? I might not be an expert dev, but I am in fact an expert failure. You see, I've made every single mistake that I've talked about in this video for a long time. And you know what that cost me? About three to four years of learning absolutely nothing under the false impression that I was learning. All I did for that entire time was copy tutorials exactly and constantly ask questions on Discord whenever I got stuck at a bug without even trying to understand it. I even bought multiple courses on Udemy and got through them completely. And all that was was a massive waste of time because I wasn't trying to understand anything. And finally one day it clicked, and that's when I realized that I was just wasting time and not actually learning. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this, but since the day I realized that fact and started approaching learning differently, I learned way more about programming in the next month than I did in all those years combined. My goal with making this video is just to tell you this. Don't be like me. The video is over, you can click off now. But if you're still here for a second, let me tell you about Raid Sha- No. <laughs> I recently set up a Fiverr page for beginner Godot mentorship. Again, full disclaimer, I'm no expert. But if you're a beginner to programming, Godot, GDScript, or C-sharp, I do think I can provide some real value for you to start out with. 
I know what not to do when learning and having someone to guide you when you're getting started can be really useful. Check it out if you're interested. First link below. Anyways, thanks for watching. See ya.